In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm taken often in my, when I hear the gospel readings in my head about how the tone matters so much. It seems to me when Jesus talks about, you know, it's like, what's wrong with you guys? What the heck is wrong with you guys? You're like a bunch of kids who, you know, won't get in the game. You know, no matter what we do, we can't get your attention. We can't get you in the game. Right? John the Baptist comes and he's austere and, you know, all that stuff. And, and I come and I'm not so austere. And, you know, and you say he's crazy and I'm not worth paying attention to. What's wrong with you guys? What do I have to do? Stand on my head to get you to pay attention? And then he, well, they, they skip a bit there. Then he, the part we don't get in the reading that they skip over is he laments all the towns that he's been to. He doesn't curse them. He's sorry that they haven't, they haven't heard. They haven't responded to the good news. They haven't responded that, that the good news and the kingdom is near you know, and then he prays, and he prays as a demonstration. Hey, guys, watch what I'm doing here. Watch how I interact with God. This is how you interact with God. And one of the things I commend to you this week is that you take this part of the scripture, the prayer of Jesus, and you pray it as if you were Jesus as if it were your prayer. You pray to the Father as your Father and recognize that everything you have is from him and that you only share with others what you get from him and that it's you, you're going to reveal him to those around you because you've received that revelation yourself. That's not just Jesus' prayer. It's a demonstration. It's our prayer and it's our life. And then he says, you know, come on. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. What he means is it's not that complicated. Come on. It's simple. And what's simple? We all walk around hoping that God loves us, trying to earn God's love, trying to be worthy of love. And the reason we can't find God's love that way is that we're already worthy because he's made us worthy. The love that we seek, the compassion that we seek, it's already there like the air you breathe. It's already there like what's around you day by day. You don't have to go and seek it. You don't have to earn it. It's there. That love is there. God loves each and every one of you as if you were the only person he had ever created for all eternity. The fullness of his love wells up within you and pours down upon you every instant of every minute of every day. And that all he asks is that you allow yourself to calm down, to take a breath, and be aware that his presence and his love is already with you. That you just have to look for it and listen for it. And it will reveal itself to you. He will reveal itself to you. Live as if you were a daughter and a son of God, because you are literally that. And in living that out, it, it becomes really uncomplicated to love God in return. And to love God returned by, by telling the people around us in word and deed, by who we are, by how we interact with them, that they too are the sons and daughter of the divine and, and that they don't have to do anything or seek anything, that that's there for them. And to recognize that 
that while, you know, in a secular way, we celebrate our declaration of independence, Jesus celebrates a declaration of interdependence. Yes, we're free, but we're interconnected with one another intimately, and we can't not be interconnected with one another. And we can either live in accordance with that reality or not, but the reality remains the same whether we choose to acknowledge it or not. Okay. We can have different opinions, but we can't have different facts. And that is an absolute fact of our life in Christ, that we are utterly independent with one another, with Jesus Christ, and through Jesus Christ with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And so we live with one another in the power of that spirit, in the power of that understanding, okay? Um, not declaring before God a bill of rights, but a bill of responsibilities, of responsibilities. It's real simple. How do we live with one another? I'm going to do something with another person, to another person person for another person if that were being done to me would that be okay if the answer is yes i should probably do it if the answer is no then i shouldn't do it nor should i tolerate anybody to be treated anybody to be dealt with as if they were not a blood relative we can't do it now, we haven't done it in a while, but we've all shared the chalice. We've all shared the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And what that is a symbol of is that the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of God runs in your veins and my veins and in everybody else's veins. There is no other to hate or despise. Just brothers and sisters. And so we live and we're called to live with response abilities, the ability to deal and interact with one another as we really are, as part of a family. And so we cannot tolerate injustice. Why? Because it's against the family, because that person is God's child. This is what we're called to. This is what we're invited to. In, in the ways that we as earthen vessels, as, as imperfect human beings can do. Right? The song that we just heard said, you know, we, God can help us be more than we can be. Okay, I don't know. This, is, this has been a time of impatience for me. I wonder if it's been something like that for you sometimes, okay? You know, and you know, sometimes when you're impatient, you kind of take a deep breath and you go out and you act with patience towards another person. And then you go in the other room and you curse and swear and jump up and down because you're impatient. And you could think mistakenly, oh, well, you know, the, the, the patient face that I put on when I'm dealing with somebody, the compassionate face, that's not real, that's fake. The real stuff is when I'm all by myself cursing and swearing and kicking the cat. That's not true. What's true is that by the power of God's grace, we can act in ways that are more generous than our emotions can feel. And that going off and sputtering under our breath in a way that protects other people from that ire, well, you know, that's like eating too many baked beans and passing gas. Got to do it. We protect others when we do that. We often have to be more generous than we actually feel because that's what it means to bear the burden of Christ. The burden of Christ is to seek justice and love. Why? Because we are loved. You are loved. From the tip of your nose to the tip of your toes. Oh, you know, God couldn't love me the same way he loved Jesus. Well, he does. And the mission in this life for each of us is to get used to that fact and to live out of that fact in our own imperfect ways. 
So here Christ's declaration of interdependence. He is dependent on the Father, and the Father is dependent on him, and we are dependent on him, and he is dependent on us. We are interdependent with one another to help receive and acknowledge the love that's already there, and then to live out of that love. And that's really very simple. Think about it. The most complicated computer programs make incredible, complicated, sophisticated calculations based on a really long series of binary choices, black, white, yes, no, good, bad. And so we have to make binary choices in a fractal universe. I'll do this or I'll do that. I'll be loving or I won't. I'll be just or I won't. I'll seek justice or I won't. That's what we're called to do. But we're called to do it out of the love that is already there. If we'll just quiet down and settle down and let ourselves receive it. Joan opened the service this morning with dearly beloved. Dearly beloved. Can you hear that? Okay, that's not just a stock phrase. Dearly beloved. That's what you are. So I pray and I ask you to pray with me today and every day that we become more and more aware of that love and then live out of that love because when we live out of that love, it's not so complicated and frankly, it's not so difficult, even though sometimes it's hard. Pray that prayer this week, the prayer that Jesus prays to the Father. That's a model for how you and I should pray. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Amen.